Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Kate and this is my channel, so I've been thinking. Uh, so if you clicked on this video, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, this is not only my first video for this channel, this is actually my first video for YouTube in general, so thanks for your support. Um, so I decided to kind of start off my whole channel uh, with a pretty intense topic. Um, I am one of those people where I pay really close attention to a lot of people's ways of communicating and it actually what inspired me to start this channel. Uh, so the topic for today is the difference between hyper-rationalism and hyper-emotional people, um, which I was like, ooh, let's get down to the meat of things. <laughs> um, start things off with a bang. Um, so what's really interesting about the two is that originally when I first started looking into this to do this video, I was under the impression that there was only the two extremes. There was either you're very hyper-rational or you're really, really hyper-emotional. Um, but the more I delved into it, I realized that it's actually uh, four quadrants. Um, so you have the people who are in the boxes of hyper-emotional, but they have the differences between people who are hyper-emotional with and without critical thinking. And same thing with hyper-rational, same thing. You are either hyper-rational with or without critical thinking. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through each one and then talk about the differences. Um, so I'm going to start off with hyper-rationalism, um, which is ironic that I'm starting with that one uh, because it's actually the one that I, as a person, struggled with the most up until recently in my life. Um, I've always been more of an emotional person. Um, and it's not that rational thought was necessarily difficult for me. I just chose to lead with my emotions more often than not. Um, so kind of what I used as the basis for figuring out how to describe this to people was I did a little research. Um, I actually am going to be uh, linking the uh, article itself in the description down below. Um, so it is an article that was written by a gentleman called Michael Mendes. Uh, I think it was written back in 2016. It's off of Big Think. And he's talking about hyper-rationality and kind of what it means. And to be honest, it doesn't seem like the person who wrote it is as much of a fan of hyper-rationalism as I was expecting it to be. Um, he talks about the definition of hyper-rationalism is basically it's an unquestioning faith in the efficacy of reason, which that sounds pretty good, right? Like that, all right, like reason is supposed to be the do all end all of how you make your decisions. Well, the problem is, is that a lot of people will claim that they're being hyper rational or they're using logical thought to figure out their problems, but they go so far into the spectrum that they start to go into what I like to call now the hyper rationalism without critical thinking. Because what was interesting is that what he talks about in his article is that these people are technically, like, fleeing from, I think he kind of worded it like, they're fleeing from any irrationality. Um, like, they, that's why they think that they're being so, so uh, steeped in logic. Like, that is their whole reason for being like, let's go through these pieces, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, the problem with that is that they're literally fleeing from their own emotions while they do this and they think that if they are really focusing on the logic behind all of their decisions and they take the emotion out of it, that therefore they will never make a wrong decision because they have gone through it with pure logic. Well, what's interesting is that reason is never without emotion. Like, all of our thoughts and processes and choices that we make have a degree of emotion behind them. Something as simple as if you're going to go get a, a like a scoop of ice cream from somewhere and you can sit there and like logically like go through the calorie content and the fat content and decide which scoop to get but you're still deciding that you want ice cream because you have like the emotion like you are desiring to have ice cream. So even if someone is being like, no, 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 I'm deciding to do this for these reasons and I'm completely logical with it and I'm going through all the reasons why this particular scoop is exactly what I want, well, you still are going to get ice cream because you desired it. Desire is an emotion. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, that particular analogy, um, a friend of mine actually helped me figure out and it, it was probably, in my opinion, the most basic way to describe how 
people can often think that they're just doing things with reason alone and there's always the emotion that's added into it. So the problem with it, when I was talking about the different quadrants, how you can deal with having, or excuse me, not deal with, but how you can end up having what you think is hyper-rationalism with out critical thinking is when, like I said, you do things with, you know, a fear of the emotional side of it. Um, the really ironic part about uh, the rational brain is that it actually comes from what is called the neocortex. It's actually been like labeled the new mammalian brain. So we're kind of fighting between what we like to call our reptilian brain, which is all instinct, and now the mammalian brain has just recently started to be something that is there to override that. Um, <sighs> the problem with that is that if all you're doing is doing things based off of logic, you can tend to have issues with like real coping skills in your day-to-day -day life. Um, I know of somebody uh, that they described a lot of their friendships as rather one-sided and they actually, I was so surprised when they said this to me because we often think of friendships and relationships as things that are emotion-based. Like whenever I'm friends with someone and like decide you are my friend, like you are more to me than an acquaintance, I'm doing it based off of a vibe. Like this feels good. Like, all right, I'm, I'm getting along with you. Like, let's go with this. Um, but in their mind, they kind of described it to me in a way that they were like, you know, you know, I want to be close to people, but a lot of my friendships end up very one-sided where it's easier for me to kind of call the shots on how close and how much I really tell them about myself because then in that way, I can actually control how this friendship is going to go and kind of keep myself from end up ending up being hurt or something like that. Um, I was really startled to hear this because this was someone that is very, very intelligent. Um, and, and I think that's that's part of the problem is that people who are hyper-rational are, are very intelligent. Um, and so they therefore like think these things to death. <laughs> um, and in, in that person's mind, it seems like the logical way to deal with avoiding anyone taking advantage of them or hurting them or just making them feel inferior was to ensure that there was always a degree of distance and that made sense in their mind. Well, obviously that's that that's hyper rationalism without critical thinking skills because you are not only doing a disservice to yourself in that moment, you're also kind of being super disrespectful to the people who think that you have a relationship with because now you're telling them that, you know, you can't even trust them enough in this friendship to believe that they're genuine enough to be deserving of your affection. And I've seen this with a lot of people. It's, it's very interesting to me. I actually have quite a few friends who kind of tend to be on the really extreme end of hyper-rationalism, where it's not that they can't have relationships, it just seems like their relationships, there's always a degree of guarding and there's always a degree of cynicism in them. And it's kind of where you always hear people talking about, oh, people always leave or, you know, it's just easier to do things this way because then I'm in control. And it is all down to control. They, they think that if they can logic their way out of it, they're always going to avoid being hurt. And that's what this article was talking about. It's a flight of emotions. It's a defense mechanism. Usually it comes from some kind of trauma in their youth or, you know, maybe not even in their youth, like some point in their life where they realized that, it's better to stop and think, put up walls, and figure out the best way to avoid any hurt. And unfortunately, that seems to be something that humans do a lot. And I mean, to be fair, we all hate being in pain of any kind. Emotional pain, to be honest, I think because it tends to linger far longer in our bodies and in our hearts and in our minds than uh, physical pain. It's the one we're all the most afraid of and the one we kind of do whatever we can, even when we think we're being logical we become illogical and irrational in our thought process of how to avoid it. So I was very intrigued on, on that whole thought process of it. Um, the funny part is, is that people who can use hyper-rationalism correctly will be able to understand that they need to kind of take a moment and think these things out but also weigh the pros and the cons. That's what it all comes down to. Like, that's where people say, okay, stop and think, weigh the pros and the cons of stuff. Those are people who are using rationalism correctly. 
if someone tells you to take the emotion out of it, they're kind of missing the point. You have to go with feels right for you. Um, and that kind of goes into our next topic as well, which is people who are hyper emotional. It all comes down to balance. So moving on to people who are hyper emotional. Um, it was really interesting. I was really trying to find an article that would at least like kind of outline as perfectly as this article by Michael Mendez um, what the difference is in like describe hyper emotional people and like what that means, even if it was like being hypersensitive or like whatever the title has become. It is way harder to find a, a like a legit article about this. Um, and I realized why. For one thing, there is this enormous stigma in our society about emotion in itself. It's very strange. The Western world seems to deem emotion as something that should be, like, kicked out. <laughs> like, take, like, I have heard this so many times throughout my adult life. Take the emotion out of it. You know, don't, don't, th don't lead with your, with your, with your heart. You know, you gotta guard your heart. You gotta, you know, think things through. And the, the ironic part is that, like, you can always tell if you really know how to pay attention to how people word this and, and why they're wording it. You can usually tell what people have experienced the most hurt in their life because they're the ones who will tell you that the most and with the most vigor. <laughs> um, almost where they become a broken record and they don't really realize, like, humans usually can't turn off emotion. It's just a thing. Um, <laughs> so... I was really trying to find this article, as I said, and most of what I found was, the, the first thing I did was I wanted to define it because I, I tried to make sure to define hyper-rationalism right away. And it was basically defined as being easily affected by emotion, which makes sense. Like, you know, you're a hyper-emotional person, therefore, like, emotions more often will affect you than not. Um, the thing that was really upsetting was that in the very beginning of this definition, it was using examples to describe it, and it actually had an example, which if you just look it up on, you, on uh, excuse me, not YouTube, on Google, and just type in a uh, definition of hyper-emotional, I think I said hyper-emotionalism or something like that, or being hyper-emotional, the definition itself at the very end, when it's just that little screen cap, says that emotional decision, the emotional decision is often the wrong decision, which I was like, what? <laughs> I was a little blown away by that, um, which I shouldn't be at this point. I have had a lot of stigma around my ability to be more in touch with my emotions my whole life, so I don't know why that surprised me so much, but it did. Um, and this is kind of what I mean. Like, there is this issue in our society where we have completely idolized being able to be rational, being able to be logical, and being able to kind of, like, toss your emotions out the window and therefore anybody who actually is in touch with their emotions anybody who is more sensitive has a harder time reining them in or just like chooses not to bottle everything up all the time because to it's been proven that's really unhealthy for you anyway and some people's triggers and fuses are a lot shorter than others um i for one am somebody who i've spent my entire life kind of being ostracized even by my own family for being more emotional than them. Uh, growing up I was raised primarily by my dad in my teen years, which, sorry daddy, <laughs> raising two teenage girls alone was gonna be hard enough as it is, but if you don't understand one child as being more emotional than the other, oh dang, that's gonna cause some problems. Um, and the problem was is that my dad didn't understand that obviously there was the hormonal aspect of being a teenager, but it was also that I just needed someone to validate my emotions. So I got labeled a lot as being overdramatic and attention seeking and being really selfish and wanting all the attention on me, which was absolutely ridiculous because I really didn't. I actually found out uh, in my early 20s, I'm a total wallflower and I hate attention on me. Um, but it was more that, like, I was willing and able and more comfortable with expressing my emotions than he was able to understand. And therefore, I was immediately told that this is not okay, there's something wrong with you. Um, not to speak ill of my father, but because he was so prepared for it, there were some things that he said to me growing up out of frustration for not knowing how to deal with it that kind of, 
left a pretty deep scar in how I dealt with my emotions for a long time. I did actually think there was something wrong with me for a really long time. And I started to idolize the rational thought. Um, the problem with that, as I said, you know, going back to what I was talking about where there's four quadrants with hyper emotional, I feel like hyper emotionalism isn't even a real word being, I guess, you know, more highly sensitive, I guess we'll go with, um, there's still the same thing where there is being super emotional with critical thinking and without. So when you are <laughs> really emotional without critical thinking, oh damn, we have all seen someone like that. Um, the problem with that is that those are people that often get labeled as drama queens, as just being like somebody that a lot of times people are very uncomfortable around um, because oftentimes people who are that sensitive are so much more raw than people are used to nowadays. Um, they will just express themselves immediately and every decision they make, like when you're doing this without the critical thinking, is 100% raw emotion. Um, to give an example, that's kind of where I think a lot of people get like labeled as hippies um, because it, traditionally up until you know probably like the last five years or so when people were labeled as a hippie they were labeled as someone who was just real free flowing and just you know going with the flow and I think that's where those terms started coming from is that they did just like not really give a shit about like why they were doing stuff they were just doing it because it felt good it was do they were doing things that they wanted to do the problem with that is that when people will live like that and have no desire or ability to have any thought process why they do things is that it does sometimes lead them into, they, they get tunnel vision really badly, um, where they're only focused on, I am doing this right in this moment because it feels this particular way to me. And the problem with that is that, and I think why people who are so emotional sometimes get labeled as being selfish or drama queens or whatever is that they can oftentimes have some kind of cataclysmic event, or excuse me, cataclysmic um, side effects to what's going on. Um, I myself have done it. I've known several friends of mine who've had it happen where they're not bad people by any means and they're not selfish individuals at all. They're usually some of the most loving people that I know. But in that moment, they've just like peaked so quickly with their decision making skills, which is all emotion and just reactionary is the problem is that a, a people who are highly emotional usually are reactionary. Um, they're impulsive. They're just going with what they're feeling. And a lot of the times there is an enormous inability to see a the consequences of what you're doing. And sometimes the consequences are as simple as who is this affecting around me? Uh, what is this going to do to me tomorrow? Like, am I gonna be okay with this uh, side effect or this end game, you know, in 24 hours? And that is where, you know, being able to be really emotional but have critical thinking is so important. And, and that's kind of what I was talking about with the balance before, is that when you're able to kind of like, you can be really emotional and you can like lead with your emotions and be like, I'm doing this because I feel this way. But I also understand that this might be the side effect and this might be kind of part of what I have to deal with because of it. Something simple like if someone has decided that they want to move across country because they just feel this huge urge to get out of town. And I mean, that is an emotion. Like I think a lot of people don't understand that when they get those, you know, impulses, like that's emotion. Um, somebody who will just pick up, pack up and move with no plan and no ability to know what's waiting for them on the other side it's kind of someone who did that without any thinking because then they're usually kind of like, oh shit, what, what do I do now? Um, but somebody who's able to be like, I feel like this is something I need to do. And I feel like you'll notice they'll often use words like that. I actually do this all the time now. I, instead of saying I want to do this, or I think this is the right decision, they'll be like, I feel like I want to do this. And if they're using critical thinking, they'll be able to explain to you why. They'll be able to say, I want to go to this place because it makes me feel happier at the thought of being able to see the mountains every day. Or, you know, I really am excited at the prospect of having a different kind of job with different kind of people around me. Or, you know, 
yo dog, I'm super depressed living where I'm living right now. Like I know a lot of people, I live in Oregon, uh, and there's a lot of people who suffer from, you know, seasonal depression and they often will want to move to other places because of the inability to get sunshine here. And that's obviously partially a health thing, but also an emotion thing. They're like, I'm really unhappy living here. Like I'm literally depressed living here. I want to move somewhere else. So that's kind of like a, a bigger, grander scale type of critical thinking uh, scenario, but it's the same thing. Um, and so, you know, I feel like, uh, see, I'm doing it myself now. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is that with both ends of the spectrum, um, there are good things and bad things to it. Um, I'm gonna expand just a tiny bit further on the uh, being more emotional part before I forget this piece. Um, being someone who's grown up being so emotional, I can say with the absolute certainty that the biggest issue I've run into is that um, people do start to think that something's wrong with you. Uh, they start to think that because, like I said, the, the Western world doesn't really understand emotion and we don't really accept it as a normal thing anymore. Um, the, when I was doing my research for this topic, one of the things that I noticed was that any description of being hyper-emotional, hypersensitive, you know, any of those things was all linked to a mental disorder. <laughs> um, like the most common one that kept coming up had to do with borderline uh, disorder or borderline personality disorder. And I was kind of like, I mean, I'm sure that that's a pretty common issue, but like, damn, I can be a more emotional person and more in touch with my feelings and not have like a, a mental illness. Um, and that's kind of, I think, where a lot of people who are more rational minded get so frustrated with people who are so emotional. Because sometimes you are talking to someone who does have the full on like mental disorder that in that makes it to where they don't have the capability to do the critical thinking, to do the rational thought that's going to like take some of the impulsivity out of their decisions. But nine times out of ten, you're just dealing with someone who is way more chill with the idea of going with their emotions than not. Um, the other part of that is that if you have someone who doesn't have a mental disorder and they're just really kind of like, you know, loosey-goosey going with the flow, a lot of times it's kind of like a child. Um, if you ever notice whenever you ask a child why they're doing something, they often can't give you an answer because they're just in the moment. It's reactionary. They don't actually know why they're doing it. And so that's why I think a lot of people who, who, and I'm sure a lot of you have been around people like this, when you're trying to like logic out why someone's making a decision and they just like cannot give you an answer, it gets so damn frustrating because you're like, how did you not know what you were doing? Like, how is this something that you didn't think through? But it's, that's the, the point. They didn't think it through. So, like I said, you've got the whole hyper-rationalism with and without critical thinking. I've given examples of what can happen when you don't do critical thinking. And ironically, you think you're taking emotion out of it, but you're just kind of running away from it. Then I gave an example of what happens when you're doing it with critical thinking, which is a much healthier way to do it. Because, you know, rational thought is part of our day-to-day -day life. It's what makes us in evolved species, like that's that's important in our day to day lives. Same thing with the emotionalism, you know, don't be someone who acts like a child. If you want anyone really to like, be able to respect your decisions, because that's another thing you run into is people try to talk you out of everything you want to do. Because they assume, which if it's that bad, you really don't think it through, they assume that you don't have like, I think the intelligence to know what you're doing. Um, most of the time, these people are intelligent. They're just so like, I'm just vibing it out, bro. They don't really care about how it's going. And it's not to say that they are selfish people or that they don't recognize that their actions have consequences. It's just usually that most of the time that's not in the forefront of their mind. So have a little bit of patience. It is something you, if you've noticed that you're like this, regardless of your age, it is much more common, obviously, in teenagers, but adults do it too. A lot of times it's just that you haven't really learned the proper coping skills to do it correctly. So just try to learn to stop and think. We've all heard that throughout our lives. I heard that a million times as a kid. Just stop and think, figure out, you know, can I still do this and feel like I've made a good decision? And if it's really not a good decision, do I really give a shit about the consequences? Sometimes you may not give a shit. And well, you know, 
the consequences are still waiting on the other side of that, bro. But, you know, at least you're still trying to think it through. Um, and again, you can lead with your heart. You can make decisions that make you happy and, and things that, you know, you feel at the end of the day. You've done what feels best for you. It's going to be more emotion based. Just don't forget to think it through on some level and acknowledge that there may be some pros and cons to what you're deciding that you may not have thought about and it might be worth it to listen to somebody who is a little more rational minded than you and maybe has an input that you didn't really think about because you're leading with your heart, not so much with your brain. So guys, thank you so much if you've made it through this whole video. Um, I'm just gonna let you know ahead of time, I don't really plan on cutting my videos or editing them at all, mainly because I am technologically challenged. <laughs> um, thank God for the fact that, you know, you can just kind of upload everything. Um, so if you made it all the way through my video, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns of any kind, uh, go ahead and post them in the comments. I will start out by saying I am always open to constructive criticism. If you're just being an asshole, I'm going to tell you right now, not only will I delete your comment, I will ignore you because I don't have time for that. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed my video. Uh, thank you again. My name is Kate and thanks for watching. So I've been thinking.